Hey guys, uh, so tonight I've got something a little bit weird. Um, gonna, you know, I, I, I guess show it off and, and tinker with it a little, but we're not gonna do too many mods on it. And uh, I guess you'll, you'll see why in just a second. So I got this package in today, and uh, if you pay attention to my label here, you'll see that it's uh, from Boston, Massachusetts here. Uh, but let's go ahead and pop it open and see the latest thing that I bought off of Taobao that I really didn't need. All right. And so we've got here a Game Boy Advance SP. Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, it has... Oh, I should grab a link cable. We can test that out. Um, I mean, it looks pretty much like a Game Boy Advance SP, you'd say, right? Well, here's the screen. Before I even boot it up, let's take a look at that screen. Compare it to an AGS-001 screen. You can see, not quite the same thing. Let me... Um, let me grab a 101 and let's take a look. All right, and compared to a 101, you notice, well, it doesn't quite look like that either. So if it's not 001, it's not a 101, what is it? All right, check this weird thing out. Pull the game out. It comes with one of these cheapo SuperCard SDs and Oh, look at that. It even comes with a 2 gigabyte SD card full of pirated ROMs, I'm sure. Um, I don't really care about this. I'll probably take a look at that, but not on camera. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's boot it up here. Look at the power switch. It, it slides up and then resets back down, but it doesn't seem to power anything on. Maybe the battery's just dead. It's entirely possible that happened. Plug it in. And charge. So it's charging. Ooh, charging things. Still nothing. Okay, well let's swap out the battery, I guess. That'd be pretty lame. I get this thing all the way from uh, wherever the hell it came from and it doesn't even work. I hate these stupid ass stickers, man. Of course, the first thing I planned on doing was taking it apart, so I don't really care about this supposed warranty. Oh, one of my favorite battery types. Before I even swap the battery. Let's, let's just see. That's why it's not booting. Yeah, I'd say that's dead. This should be well over 3 volts. Alright. So that would be why it's not booting. Let me salvage a battery. I say salvage, but want this back at some point. Oh, interesting. That doesn't work in this shell. That's going to be a pain in the butt. I don't think I ever tested my batteries in these cheapo aftermarket shells. Did it come on? Oh, it did come on. Weird noise, right? Unfortunately, it looks like my screen has some lines on it. That's incredibly disappointing, and the speaker's making an awful noise, but I must adjust the system settings. Please touch the touch screen. No, I'm kidding.
Interesting, right? It's a DS. I'll set the rest of this junk later. I'm just gonna pull the battery out anyway. I don't know why I even bothered putting my name in. So the screen light turns on and off. That probably makes this a uh, zero zero or a zero zero one. Uh, the original model, the NTR, not the USG. The uh, original NDS, not the light. And you can go into settings. Apparently, that just crashes it. That's cool. Pretty sure you can actually go into settings. Yeah. I think that battery's just in there a little too loose. And I mean, you can change it. Top screen, change GBA to top screen, and then when this thing boots, you probably won't get any games. So we'll leave that that way. Change the language. Not that it matters much. Um, what we want specifically, we want auto mode on. It looks like it's already on. So let's reset this. Stay. And let's try out Pokemon Ruby. Should boot up right into the game. Ta-da! Let me kill these lights so you can see what's going on here a little bit better. As I bump the console and it turns off again. So, interesting, uh, I did notice that my screen had a few, um, quite a few, like, bad pixels, these lines on the top. They are completely out of the viewable window once you've actually got a game booted up, but, I mean, it's, plays pretty much how you'd expect. I mean, I don't think we're going to see any screen tearing or, or frame dropping or anything like that because this is, for all intents and purposes, just an original DS that someone hacked up and put in an SP. But that's not even the interesting part. Just wait. So, I need, I want to test this link port because that is just so fascinating to me. Um... Problem is, I, oh no, I do have two Game Boys. I forgot I had this one on my desk. Oh, shoot, but I did the thing I always hate doing. I'll have to test that later. My other Pokemon game is in the middle of an Elite Four run, and that'll take a few minutes. So let's get to uh, the other bird I was gonna try and kill with this stone here. Um, but before I get too far, we're going to pop this battery in here and just leave it charged and see if it comes back. I think it will. They usually do. But I'm going to be pretty upset if I got this console after how much I paid for it and the screen's busted and the battery's busted. Oh. Hang on, one more thing. We've got to test one more thing before I take it apart. Stay, please. Where it is it's sticking out of the console? I just flipped it. Now, this won't, just like a regular DS, this isn't going to work on Game Boy. Like, I can't even insert this. There's lockouts in there. Oh, and you know what? Hang on. Let's test one more thing. What does this button do? Oh, that adjusts the light like um, an AGS-101. 
but if you do it through the menu, it turns the light off entirely. That's interesting. Okay. Now let's dig into the guts. So I think this thing is like 40 bucks or something on Taobao. It was quite a bit more than I wanted to pay, especially since the last person who I saw who bought one of these paid like half that. But I mean, even at 40 bucks, I think it's cool enough novelty. I paid more on crappier screen kits, you know? Pop that off. We just have the normal um, reproduction SP housing. Set that aside. And here is the interesting part. Look at that. So this is an entire custom PCB. They took the original CPU from the uh, Nintendo DS and the SRAM and we've got here the power switch. Um, actually, this power switch can't be out of the DS because the DS used a push button power switch. This would be out of a DS Lite. So maybe this is some weird hardware amalgam of the two because the DS Lite didn't have this type of volume slider. Yeah, it's it's weird, man. Let's keep going. Got this ribbon cable. I'm not sure, but I think this is custom. I really hope it isn't. But it might be. Alright, so let's take a closer look at the front of this board here. So, just like on the original SP, we have the power management circuit here. Um, I'm guessing this is also salvaged from the DS. I mean, why not? It does all the same thing and laid out pretty much the same as the SP. You've got your charge fuse there, uh, your battery fuse right there. On the SP, this fuse is actually right over here, and uh, this fuse is right over... It's up here, but I think it's on this side. I can't remember. I think it's right here. They put the potentiometer for the LCD in the same spot as the SP so you can still adjust it and this thing is just so cool oh, we've got new clicky tactile switches for the buttons look they even put Nintendo logos on it like they want to pretend it's an official original thing but if we just to show you here, if you try and plug this in, you see there's these um, these protrusions on the bottom that won't let you plug in an original Game Boy cart. It's a Game Boy Advance cart. If you look at it from the top, you've got these two corners cut out. On an original Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP, if you look inside the cart slot, there's a physical switch on this side that gets actuated by the corner when you push the cart in. And that's what tells the Game Boy to switch modes. And that's why this fits just fine with those protrusions. But anyway, yeah, this is a fantastic piece of junk. I love it. All right, let's keep going though. Oh God, that's so terrible. How did this thing still even work? I'm just going to take all this junk out. If it wasn't painfully obvious, I'm reshelling this thing. Because right. this shell, these hinges, this is garbage. 
does not feel good. I suppose I don't need to reshell the whole thing just to swap out the hinges, but I'm taking the whole thing apart anyway, so why not? All right, I think I need a spudger. How do we not have a spudger? Oh, never mind, I found one. Don't worry. I was about to start yelling at my cat for something he didn't even do. That would make me a subreddit moderator. I mean, oops. And those are all tri-wing screws. The... All right, all the screws in this thing so far have been these Phillips crosshead JIS, whatever they are, screws. But I get to the screen and they're all tri-point. I mean, it's just kind of weird. I, I expected them to do like an all or nothing approach, not just mix and match screws. And in traditional SP fashion, the screen stuck to the back. And that feels super sketchy coming out. But this is what I was concerned about. This looks like a custom LCD. And I don't know what's up with that. If anyone wants to help me do research on this, there's some numbers and letters on the back here. Looks like QPWBM0107TPZZ. I don't know if you'll be able to find anything with that. You can peel this plastic lens up. It doesn't look like it's adhered very well. And there's just the front of the screen. Probably shouldn't have done that because now there's going to be dirt and dust in here. I'm never going to get it clean. But there we have it. There's the screen. It certainly looks like a, an original DS screen, but the ribbon cable on it's different. And that's just blowing my mind. Yeah, that peels up and we see the backlight from the side there. Oops, I hope I didn't completely ruin that right now. All right, anyway, on to the second bird. I also ordered one of these and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Um, might as well reshell it into this console or this console into this shell. So what this is, it is an aftermarket reproduction of one of the ultra limited edition, super rare, must look Kyogre Game Boy Advance SP shells. Now, I think it's super cool that they're making these, but it this is very obviously a reproduction shell. It is not, this is not good. It, it does not feel good. Um, so, the printing itself, there's a very significant texture to it, and I don't have a Kyogre, like an OEM Kyogre shell, but I know that the Nintendo print quality is much better, much more flat with the shell, because um, this is OEM. Um, whereas this, like there's a, 
There's a texture, you can hear that when I rub that against it. Also, there should be a Kyogre right here. And this is just empty blue. And that's kind of disappointing. Not to mention, this doesn't even fit. Okay. This thing is just garbage. This is even worse than I thought it was. Screw it, let's try it anyway. See how far we get. So I, I think I ordered these. Not 100% sure. Maybe someone just shipped them to me, but they already have the uh, blue. Um, these are clearly from two different consoles, but they're both blue. Uh, they have the hinge covers on them. These are just the hinges. I'm, I did make a video about this and I'm going to be making another one because I think I can do better. But long story short, there is a left and a right hinge in your SP. Don't mix them up or your hinge will feel like garbage. Uh, the black one goes on the left, the white one goes on the right. But we might not be installing this shell because this is not going together. Okay, that one went in. That one went in. There we go. Eh, maybe it'll break in. It still feels freaking terrible. You know what? No. I I hate it. I'm not doing it. This feels like garbage. I'm gonna go grab another shell. Alright, I went and grabbed this. It's the same, mostly. This is just the OEM version of the shell that this is trying to be. But the only piece I'll use of this is the cover. But yeah, this is just an OEM shell. Um, I took it apart to clean it at some point, and clearly that didn't happen. But it's okay. So I'll use these two because these don't match. I'll just slide the hinge covers off, slide on the new slash original ones. And I'll pop those other ones out later. When possible, I always recommend trying to use your original hinges, but there are some pretty decent aftermarket ones now. But you just gotta open it up to the open angle and the hinge should pop right in. And there we go. Nice and clicky. Alright. We're going to use the original lens. I'm going to try and put this back together. Pretty sure that goes like that. Nope. Or maybe, I don't know. Screw it, we'll find out shortly. Does that go on there? No, it does not. How do I do on this side? Actually, it looks fine. But it won't go together. So let's try again. This thing would look really cool, I think, with a full custom lens. I knew I shouldn't have taken this part off. Let's try that.
Ah, I see why it doesn't fit now. This is modified. No problem. Just attack it with my flush cutters and pick pieces out till I get it. just decided on what I'm going to title this video and uh, so I'm going to apologize 26 and a half minutes into it um, for the clickbait title. But the thumbnail I don't think will be clickbait so deal with it. Alright, looks factory. Oh, and that went together really nicely. There we go. Right. Pop the screws back in. Yeah, it looks good. So to be clear, that uh, other shell, the aftermarket shell that I was going to use, I don't think that that thing feels like garbage because of the hinges. I think it just feels like garbage because it's a garbage shell. And I would much prefer to use OEM screws in an OEM shell, but I don't think that's an option today. And I guess we're using aftermarket buttons because I didn't have any in that bag. That's B. That goes in there. Alright, so if anyone knows where to get another one of these screens, I am all ears. I 
That is actually significantly easier to do on this console than on an SP because there's so much more slack on that uh, ribbon. to use the original power switch as well because this is very clearly modified for this. Explains why it felt so weird. Oh, and I have no shoulder buttons. Okay, well that's fine. Real crime is what happened to that square nut. I just want to make sure this actually screws into that. And it does, okay. I've seen some aftermarket shells with a different pitch on these. So I just want to make sure. like they had to cut some out of this shell here. Well, that's a shame. I was hoping to not have to modify this, but oh well. There's tons of these things. Freaks me out that they use such short screws when the OEM screws are so much longer. And again, I could swap these out, but I don't have any handy. a hair on the long side. So we'll play it safe. Nice. All right. Let's see if this battery is any good now. doesn't catch. Why doesn't it catch? I think the square nut fell out. Ugh. Like, I, I, I think it's still in there, it just it's not pressing up against the cart reader like it usually does. Yeah, I think it booted. Yeah. Probably have to go through this setup again. The sound on this thing is awful. Um, I'm gonna go through the setup. I'm gonna go ahead and pause on this for a little while. The light shows green, so I guess it's charged enough. But I'm going to play my other game so I can get out of the Elite Four because we gotta try that out and see what that's all about. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so I ended up going through the Elite Four, and of course, you know, because I was trying to make it go quick, I'd actually gotten further than I had gotten before. Um, just for context, I'm playing through Pokemon Emerald the same save file I've been playing through for the past like year and a half at this point. I still haven't beaten it, but 
Anyway, um, it occurred to me another test that I could have done that made things a lot easier, uh, but just real quick, I wanted to show that these batteries do work in the Nintendo DS. All is well there if you want to give it a shot. Screw that in here. But this should boot up. And of course I'll have to go through the setup. Hadn't really considered that. Um, one moment. All right, sorry about that. So I've got here a DS macro that I made a while back. Um, you can kill these lights because these screens are garbage. And uh, I mean, you can see it's not the greatest screen in the world, but it works just fine. And this one in particular is modded so that you have both screens on the one LCD. But anyway, I wanted to uh, compare the two screens, but let me, uh, let me get back to that in just a moment here. It occurred to me that there was an easy test to see if this would work, and um, well, quite frankly, it doesn't work. So I have a wireless adapter plugged into it. Oh, I didn't even have that plugged in all the way. And um, you can actually boot DS macros, um, these things, in multi-boot mode even though nothing actually works. So if you hold start and select on startup, it goes into multi-boot mode. So let me let me do that one more time just to show you. Hold start and select. You hear that little doo 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 doo, and it goes into multi-boot mode. And then what that does on a normal Game Boy Advance, um, it'll boot the Game Boy into multi-boot mode, and then you can boot it off of a uh, link cable program. You can send a game over the link cable. That's how some games like for example, if we pop the wireless thing in here and boot the Game Boy with no game in it, it should, maybe not. It should boot into a pro, there it goes, a program on the link port or on the wireless adapter. And then you can search for a game. So this is how you play like Mario Kart with four players, but with only one game pack. Um, but anyway, this thing doesn't do that. I've got the wireless adapter in, and just for shit and giggles, we know this wireless adapter works. Let's swap this out. And we have to have a game in there just to get the DS to boot into GBA mode. But I'll we'll start select, it goes into multi boot mode, and nothing. Now, if we unplug this and boot into the normal game, because this one is emerald, that's what made me think of the wireless adapters because. There's that lady you could talk to about the wireless adapter. Let's plug this in and see if it does it again. Last time I did that, the Game Boy just crashed entirely. But she tells me my wireless adapter is not connected properly. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Maybe it's just not compatible with wireless adapters. I've got this one here, the link cable plugged in. See, the Game Boy froze again. Power cycle it. Plug this in here. And we will go Trade Center. And I seriously don't think this is going to work. Yeah, it should have picked up by now if it was going to work. But please wait. B button cancel. I don't think this is going anywhere. Try reseeding that. Heck, let's. 
let's flip it around. Still nothing. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So here is what I wanted to show off, really. Let's pop a Pokemon game in here. Let's just compare these two screens. I mean, size-wise, let's go outside. They're the same, which makes sense because they're basically the same screen. But colors are not great. Unfortunately, I'm not in the same place in both of these games. But I'm sure as most of you know, the screen quality on an original DS screen is not that great. The screen quality on this is even worse. Um, I don't know how they managed to do that. There's like no angle that it looks good. The contrast is just, it's, it's not there. Um, but I mean the actual image size of the, L like I'm pretty sure these are the same LCD. I'd, I'd bet money on that. Um, but the screen quality, it's just, it's, they managed to take this, which was already not great, and make it even worse. And uh, yeah. Let's do one more thing. We'll boot both of these into the system menu. And because this is original DS, you know, you can turn the backlight off and you have your transflective screen and it's really shitty, but it's it is there and it does work. You can do the same thing with this one. Turn it off. There you go, there's your transflective screen. Even though we have this button that just increases and decreases the brightness with the light off. The button does nothing. And there's no DS slot on this, so there's no way to boot a DS card. Um, I'm pretty sure PictoChat just crashes the console. Let's find out. Oh, it doesn't crash the console, but pressing A does nothing here. Let's try download play. Oh, I should have got a, um, a download play game we can test. That would be interesting. But on a working proper DS, when you go into PictoChat, you can select one of these rooms, hit A, and it'll let you join the room and send stuff, and you can view the chat history and whatnot. Uh, oh, it's my birthday today. No, it's not. It's just set to January 1st. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, it would be interesting to see if download play works on this. I really don't think it will because there's no wireless antenna. Come to think of it, I don't even think this thing has a wireless card in it. I don't imagine they would have included that functionality, but there we go. Another thing I want to touch on, this this screen is straight up defective. You can see now that I've moved the LCD up physically within the housing, you can see more at the bottom of the screen. There's more lines along the bottom there. Uh, there's these lines across the top. In their defense, when you're actually in game, you cannot see any of that. It works just fine. Yeah, all of that is outside of the viewing area. Um, so I guess let's get into, let's get into some final thoughts because I got to wrap this video up at some point. Um, so first off, I want to touch on this Kyogre shell. Don't buy one. They're, they're garbage. They're so bad. Oh my God. They're so bad. Um, I can say without a doubt that this Kyogre shell is the worst aftermarket shell I have ever purchased. Um, 
this, like the hinge doesn't even, like it gets stuck at certain points because the molding in the shell is too, the part, these two parts don't fit together properly. And so the hinge doesn't work properly. Uh, also, the printing is terrible quality and not even correct. Um, I mean, if you want one for your collection, fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. It's passable, assuming you don't get one that's completely terrible. And even then, three of the four body panels are just regular blue, so you could do what I did and use an OEM blue console and then just swap out the, the top cover or even use another aftermarket blue shell that's not as terrible and um, that'd be okay but just just don't buy the shell it's so bad okay now that that's out of the way let's talk about the system itself now I probably should have done more playing with it before I reshelled it in case some of the issues that I'm having are related to me reshelling it, but I really, really, really don't think that's the case. Um, first off, this D-pad is one of the worst D-pads I've ever felt on an SP. Granted, that could be fixed pretty easily by just swapping out the aftermarket buttons with some better buttons and swapping out the membrane with a better, better membrane. Fine. It is what it is. The console itself, I played through the uh, the Elite Four when I, when I had Emerald in here, and uh, I played through it on this console just to you know try it out. And the console froze on me uh, about three times randomly. And then when I was playing with the wireless adapter, and you even saw earlier on camera when it froze up, uh, just. It randomly freezes. I tried doing a soft reset with AB start select and that locked off the console. Let's see if we can get it to do that again. Oh no, it actually reset this time. Um, last time it just locked up the console and froze it. And yeah, I mean, it's it's not great. I have no, <laughs> I have no words for it. Um, so I guess it comes down to, you know, should you get one? Do you want one? Because um, like I said, I, I think I paid like 40 bucks for this thing, which if you're after a backlit Game Boy Advance, all right, this is, this is quite a bit cheaper than an AGS 101 or even an AGS 001 with a, um, an IPS kit or something. Come on. See, I thought I had auto on. Why didn't it boot? See, it is on auto, and it didn't even boot the game. Come on. There we go. I'm just going to put it in multi-boot mode just so we can take a look at the screen here. Um, and I'm going to pop a battery in this. This is just a, a 101. And we'll take a look at that, too. Uh, i got to pull the battery out of my macro here. No, no, I don't. Hang on. I'm sorry. I always forget I have a big old pouch of batteries. It's only 188 milliamps, but it'll work. Milliamp hours. That way, in case I need to switch back again. So let's take a look at all three side by side. All right. You can see, I hope you can see, that of these three, this one is the brightest. Uh, now, this console, this is the funny playing one, so this is the default brightness. Uh, you can press the brightness key, bring it up, bring it down, etc. cetera. Um, this console, it does get brighter a little bit. I'd say it's about on par with uh, the AGS-101. And uh, it just occurred to me that I can actually measure it and give you some concrete numbers. So let me grab my tool here. So this isn't gonna be a perfectly scientific test because 
I don't feel like turning off all the lights, but on high brightness, this thing's at about 56 lux. AGS 101, 53 lux. Now this goes on even higher, and that goes up to 142 lux. Um, this one we can put on low brightness here, and it goes down to 29.3. So, yeah. And for those who aren't familiar, Lux is a garbage unit. Uh, it doesn't mean anything in particular, but we can compare the two measurements because higher Lux is brighter. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a backlit Game Boy, I mean, I guess it's okay. Uh, but here's one more thing to consider. Now, let me get my calipers. All right. 101 screen is 61 millimeters by 40.5 millimeters. And that's the actual display, the, the display area. 61 by 40.5. This one has a higher DPI, so it is 38 by 57. All right. It's a... Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it's significant. I mean, when you look at the numbers, it seems significant, but when you're actually playing it, it really doesn't, it really doesn't feel that bad. Um, personally, I don't mind it. The single biggest issue was that my console just kept freezing on me. Uh, but otherwise, I think with some mods, it could be pretty decent. Um, I think I might see about getting a custom printed screen lens for this thing uh, with tighter bezels that that would be pretty cool cuz i those lines are really distracting me up at the top you can, probably can't even see them but if i pull it up there now you can see it a little bit better um, but at the very least i think it could use a glass screen lens and otherwise i i, I think that's all i have to cover um, oh nope one more thing Shoulder buttons on a stock SP, they're passable. Shoulder buttons on this thing are freaking amazing and I love them. We're definitely gonna be putting these in a uh, in another SP at some point. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that's all I got. Um, if there's anything you guys want me to try out, I'm all ears, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm going to See if I can't find the little blue rubber nubbins for this shell. I think I have them somewhere. If not, I'll just use the black ones from the old shell. Uh, but otherwise, I think that's all I got for the night. And I'm going to swap out this god-awful D-pad. And I will catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.